need you to move, sweetheart. Can we share? Good boys. Here we go. Sharon's caring. You want to go in there? Hi, everybody. Um... Oh, God, I don't even know where to start. I just want to preface this video by saying anything that I'm sharing with you in this video has been agreed by both David and I, which in this situation is the only two people's opinions that I care about. I share my life online. Social media is my job. So therefore it seems and feels impossible for me to carry on posting as usual having had this huge life change happen to me without acknowledging it first. Not in the sense that I owe anybody any explanations or that I need to justify anything at all. I think it's just, in my opinion, a level of respect that you guys, you provide me with this life by the support that you show me and have shown me over the years. And therefore I do feel that there is a responsibility for me to be truthful and honest to the best I can respecting everyone involved in order to maintain that kind of like genuine authentic I am who I am vibe. <laughs> David and I have split up. We have been together for nine years and We've been married for eight months. We got married in May, 2022. It's been categorically the hardest thing that I've had to go through, and I'm sure him as well, because I don't even know where to start. That tastes like shit. There's this part of both David and I that feel like it could probably help people to talk about the reasoning a little bit because I think sometimes with breakups people assume that they're nasty and hostile and there's loads of drama involved and that there's always a reason like a one reason for why you'd split up with someone after so long. I met David when I was 22 and I'm 31 now. There's seven years between us so when I met him um, I would say that position I was in was very unconfident, unsure of myself, seeked validation craved attention, had a lot of issues around relationships, longevity of relationships, marriage. I guess like most 22 year old girls are still very much trying to figure out their place in the world and that's very much where I was when I met David. We actually had quite a turbulent start to our relationship and the one thing that I always pride David on or David and I together on is that we make such a good team. Like we're just so, when things are thrown at us, we just get it done. I really, really felt like I wasn't gonna get emotional. So every time all of these like difficult things were thrown at us, even right from the start, we always just really worked through it, I guess. But I think on reflection, what actually happened by us both being these providers or fixers to a solution actually meant that we ended up neglecting and acknowledging the things that were wrong or weren't fitting together within ourselves and then collectively in a relationship together. So as the years went by, David and I have made some amazing memories. We've had some incredibly wonderful times but a lot of problems have, I guess, sort of simmered below the surface and perhaps over the years kind of got a bit bigger and of recent completely erupted at the surface. I will never ever be able to sit here or sit in front of anybody and say a bad word about that man because he is an incredibly kind, caring, respectful person and has shown me nothing but love and support over the years. And I also regret nothing. 
I don't, I don't look back on the nine years and think they were a waste. I don't regret not feeling what I felt sooner. I think that it was all meant to happen the way that it did and the way that it has. But I think where things went wrong was we both ended up compromising a lot for each other because we cared about each other without realising the detriment of what that meant for us as individuals. And I'm a firm believer that you cannot pour from an empty cup and you cannot give your all to someone until you have given your all to yourself. My ability to know who I am as a woman has grown so significantly in the last sort of five to six years, I'd say. And I've worked really, really hard to get to this place whereby I look back on that 22 year old girl and she no longer needs the things that she needed back then. And I think perhaps maybe the opposite's happened for David, whereby we've both had this beautiful relationship for nine years where we've allowed each other the space to grow as individuals, but that's happened at different paces and perhaps he's compromised things that he thought would make me happy and assumed things that would make me happy. And there's just been like a cross of cross of communication which has then led to a cross of emotional connection so I would say over the last three years I've had feelings where I've thought oh god I don't know if this is how things are meant to feel or if this is right or if I'm just being silly and of course like you have everything why on earth would you think that there's something wrong these are all really really internal thoughts that I've been having over the last yeah, like three years, it's just the marker I can think of. I'm literally had a total mind blank, oh my God. I think the transition that you make in your 20s is so huge. Your transition as a woman is even huger. <laughs> is huger a word? Is even bigger. And also I think if you do that work to unlearn social standards and what's expected of you as a woman and you put that work in to become a really strong woman it changes things for you and it makes you see things differently and I think I spent a long time telling myself that things were okay and things were good enough and things were you know I should be grateful for what I do have for so long that eventually it finally got to the stage where I felt brave enough and I felt strong enough to say it's just not working anymore and it just doesn't fit the same way that maybe it once did when those two people were quite would you know entirely different people or that it's just run its course and don't get me wrong <laughs> like relationships are hard marriage is hard and there's so many things that you have to work through and you know, we've been in couples therapy, we've, we've tried things, even to my own fault, expected things to change. And you can't change things. You can't change someone. You can't change things about a person. And this, this applies to both David and I, like, I think there were parts of us that kind of maybe naively thought that, but when you love someone and you care about someone that you can change and you can be a different person but the reality is you just can't you can change you can change anything about yourself if you do it for you that's what I believe that's my opinion and that's why I think my self-worth and self-confidence has grown so much over the years because I made a vow to myself that I was doing it for me and not for anyone else or to ever let anyone else validate how I felt. So I've gone from this sort of insecure girl <laughs> to a woman who now feels like I don't need someone to tell me anything because I can choose to feel that myself regardless. So just that strength in itself is just like prolific, it's so huge. And there's obviously going to be like 
I think you'd have to be a specific person to be able to go through a breakup and not feel anything or just be able to switch your feelings off straight away. I just, it's not that simple. Like we've built a beautiful life together. We have a house, we've built a financial, you know, a level of financial stability together. We've both done that. We've both worked hard for that. We've got <laughs> two beautiful boys. <laughs> You know, you have the connections with the families that you've built up over the years. Like, there's so much sadness that surrounds a breakup. I feel just so proud of us, the way that we've handled things and the way that we've dealt with this situation. There's been no nastiness, there's been no arguing, there's been no screaming, no name calling. Like, a breakup doesn't have to be like that. And I think we have this perception of breakups being hugely dramatic and he said this and she did that and it was her fault and it was his fault. Whereas I think this is a slightly different situation in the sense of it's no one's fault. The things just aren't connecting anymore and we've both grown into completely different people that want different things from life. And that doesn't make it any easier, it's just, it's still sad and it's still hard. There's a lot that I guess can't be explained because a lot of it comes from feelings and I can't explain feelings that are or aren't there. It's just sad, but it's right. And I also wanna make sure that if you have a feeling, a gut feeling, and your heart and your soul is trying to tell you something, don't let anybody tell you that you should just ignore that. I guess I am specifically aiming this at women because we are told to take the bare minimum and be happy with the bare minimum. And that's, I am not in any way saying David's given me the bare minimum. That's not what I mean, but I'm saying collectively as women, that's what we've been taught to expect over the years. So it can be really difficult to get to a position where as a woman, you are saying, this isn't right for me and as scary as it may seem I know that I want or deserve or desire or need more and again you know <clears throat> David has over the nine years that we've been together given me that space to grow into this woman that I am you know he's a huge huge part of the reason that I am the woman I am today as are my friends and you know my family and stuff like that obviously it's a whole collective of things so yeah I guess I could probably go on forever but I don't want to because I'm clearly getting more emotional about this than I expected and I do not want to just sit here and cry but it's been really emotional I'm very teary um so I have moments of like feeling great and then I'll have moments of just really stupid shit <laughs> making me cry just so many little things that have become habitual over the years are just going to be going to take a really long time for me to get used to as will it for him but yeah we are still friends I will always love him I will always respect him and care for him um no matter what happens you know he, he may go on to meet someone who says you can have nothing to do with her hope to god that doesn't happen and I I actually hope to god that if and when we are both to meet someone else that we would both choose somebody with that same maturity that we've dealt with this situation and therefore we can stay friends because I do believe that that's possible especially with David and I I think we've already shown that that's possible between the two of us and it's only been um you know it's been a short period of time but yeah that's why I've been very quiet on social media because it's felt it's felt really hard to show up having not communicated with you what's been happening and what's gone on. And again, I know I don't owe that to anybody, but there is an element of kind of feeling like it makes sense for you to know, I guess. It's gonna come as a huge shock to so many people, but for us, it's been months. For me, it's been a few years. There are some people very, very close to me that I expect weren't shocked. 
just from things that maybe I've like given them tiny tiny things and then just like quickly clawed them back because I wasn't ready to explain how I felt even in my own head let alone out loud and that's why this situation has come to a complete eruption because I guess I finally just allowed myself to not suppress anymore and not ignore how I felt. David and I are working through everything, we're both okay, we're still friends, there will always be a lot of love there, we're amicable, there's no hate, there's no animosity, there's no, there's nothing dramatic about it. This is a whole new chapter of me kind of, I guess, slotting the, I have done so much self-growth over the last few years that it doesn't ever stop, there's no end journey, so there's still so many things that I'm going to have to learn and become used to and um, for any of you that did know David and I, you will know that he is a black and white man and I am a grey in between woman, <laughs> which worked for us for so long and now David's going to have to learn a lot of grey and I'm going to have to learn a lot of black and white because together they were the things that fundamentally did, did work. So yeah, there's going to be loads of change coming my way. Um, and obviously I'm scared I, in my in my phase of suppressing how I felt I was thinking about the next stage of having children which actually ended up being one of the catalysts of me bringing everything to the surface so being 31 and single knowing full well that I do want to have kids is scary um, having to live on my own having lived with someone for nine years feels scary Having to do my own tax return feels fucking scary. <laughs> there are so many things that are just going to feel huge. But the best things happen when we're scared and when we push ourselves outside of our comfort zone. So I know that I have the uh, best support system to help me along the way, which I am eternally grateful for. I cannot thank you. I literally cannot thank you enough for the kindness and the support that you've shown me over the last few weeks, months. I feel like a lot of you have guessed stuff and gauged that things aren't quite right and you've sent me just the most beautiful messages that make me feel like my immediate circle is extended online with all these people that I've never met before. Um, so honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I just, I can't thank you enough. This is definitely more emotional than I'd um, anticipated. I actually like chose to do a day where I felt really calm and like, there's no tears today, as Ariana Grande would say. There's no tears left to cry. Well, apparently there is, and that's fine because I'm feeling what I'm feeling and uh, it's good to cry. Thank you so much. I really hope you understand. I hope that there's some sort of clarity now as to why I've been so quiet and Moving forward, things will be different, but they're going to be okay. And um, I'm not quite at the stage of feeling excited, but I'm at the stage of knowing that this is right. And I feel proud of myself for growing the strength to say that out loud. Yeah. <laughs> Are you snoring? Thank you so much, and I will see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.